Oh. I slept one and a half hours last night. So they do a lot of deliberately lit fires around here. What? No way you'd let me be able to get this close in uh, Melbourne. So these landscapes are formed. Oh, there's a little kangaroo over there. You just hopped behind the tree. Last week on How to Get Lost in WA, we did the mammoth trip from Broome all the way to Kununurra, stopping over in Derby for the day. We saw the incredible 11.4 metre tide, the boa prison tree, and it rained. If you haven't seen that episode yet, hit that link above. You will get a giggle out of how excited I got over the rain. Good morning. Morning. I'm incredibly tired this morning. How are you feeling? I feel, well, I've got to say I feel great because I've had more than like three, four hours sleep. I slept one and a half hours last night. We pulled over in a little rest stop, 24 hour rest stop, about 45 minutes out of Carnarvon. Oh my God, yeah, where are we? Out. Um, and I did not sleep a wink. I was winging out thinking a crocodile was going to come and attack me because I spent all day yesterday reading about crocodile dangers. Kieran, on the other hand, slept wonderfully in the swag next to the car. So he's feeling very refreshed. So right now we're in Kananara. We just had some brekkie. We're gonna to go to the visitor center and get some more information and more paper pamphlets. And we are here until Sunday, Sunday. and it's Wednesday. So we've got plenty of time. So because of our absolutely rubbish sleep we had the night before in the truck stop, we ended up doing basically nothing all day. We slept and laid by the pool and basically just got some energy back. And then we headed out to a beautiful spot known as Kelly's Knob, which is a lookout vantage point that looks over Kananara and it's supposed to be stunning. However, when we got there, it seemed to be a little bit on fire. So we've just come out to Kelly's Knob and as well, oh my God, you can see it. I wonder if it's a proper burner. Sure yeah, I reckon. I reckon you reckon they're be. doing a proper banner? Yeah, I... So we came out to Kelly's Knob, as I was saying, to come get some sunset photos. Um, and the road's closed and there's all this smoke, so something's on fire. Not sure if it's lit deliberately or whether it's an accident. I reckon it's probably deliberately lit. All the fires around here seem to be deliberately lit. Oh my god, it's like starting here too. It's going down the mountain. Yeah. So they do a lot of deliberately lit fires around here just because it's like a way of keeping the ground under control. Oh my god, this is so bumpy. Uh, it's called fire stick farming actually and it came from the Aboriginal people like thousands of years ago and they just burn the ground in um, like seasonal patterns to keep all the grass and all the dry stuff low and it also allows lots of plants to seed. So we're assuming that's what it is but not totally sure what's going on. Yeah. So crazy. What? No way you'd let me be able to get this close in uh, Melbourne. Oh. Look at those colours up there. So yeah, it is deliberately lit. Um, they are just tidying up, but I think it's crazy in Melbourne or in Victoria, where we come from, they would have the entire street shut down, if not the whole bloody town, if a fire like that was going on. They would definitely at least have the road shut off. But that was pretty cool. I guess I just trust people more around here and it's just more of a regular practice, which I w wish it was in Melbourne, otherwise we wouldn't have devastating fires like Black Sat Day and stuff. So yeah. The next day we managed to go back up to Kelly's Knob and it wasn't on fire this time, so you can actually see what it's supposed to look like. It's absolutely stunning. If you're in Kununurra and looking for a beautiful place to watch the sunset, we highly recommend this little short walk up to Kelly's Knob. You get an amazing look over the town and the sunset here is stunning. Good morning. Uh, so we've gotten up early because it's getting quite hot here in uh, Kununurra. Um, 
and hadn't got an early night's sleep in, so she was mm, able to get up. I no sleep yesterday. Yeah. So, yeah, Maruma National Park. Um, we've got a few short walks today. It's apparently called the Mini Bungle Bungles, and considering we can't go to the actual Bungle Bungles, this should be quite nice. Yeah. Okay, just to recap what was said there, because Kira and I are clearly still in very sleep-deprived place, we are heading out to the Maruma National Park today. It's also known as the Hidden Valley National Park, and it's just outside of Kununurra. The park covers about 2,000 hectares and it has these beautiful, unusual sandstone formations that are very similar to the Bungle Bungles, just a lot smaller. Which was very convenient because we didn't get to go to the Bungle Bungles because we don't have a four-wheel drive. So these landscapes are formed. Oh, there's a little kangaroo over there. You just up behind the tree. Ah, oh, I can't believe I saw that out the corner of my eye. He's like up on the rock. So what did you find? Oh yeah, I can definitely see him. Anyway, as I was saying, and Kieran was trying to say before, that over millions of years, these have been these mountains and rock formations have been carved out by wind and erosion, um, which is only possible through wind and erosion to make these crazy cool shapes. But also, the reason they've got all these lines through them is because this used to all be underwater. And this rock formation is caused by um, sedentary movement in the water, so all the silt and sand and crap forming at the bottom, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so this is the top of the Miramar National Park, I think that's how you say it. And as you can see, it's very similar to the Bungle Bungles. We won't actually get to go to the Bungle Bungles because it's four-wheel drive only and we can't afford to do a tour, which is a shame, but they say this is very similar to what it looks like. So you can see all these rocks, particularly this one up here, has just eroded away through water and wind over millions and millions of years to make all these amazing formations. To conclude our first day in Kananara, we had tickets to the Corroboree Under the Stars where we got to see some amazing Indigenous performances. How are we? Woo! That's not loud enough. How are we? fantastically disorganized it was an absolute hoot at times there was just absolutely no lighting so I apologize for this footage but we just had the greatest time the music was amazing the people were super nice and the performances were really quite breathtaking <laughs> At the end of the performance, the dancers even invited the audience up onto stage to have a go at dancing, just the way they did. Kieran volunteered his tribute and I think he did a pretty amazing job. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. 
We both agree that this was a pretty amazing way to be introduced to Kananara. We have one more episode in Kananara for you guys next week. We go on two amazing road trips, one out to the fabulous Lake Argyle and a full day trip out to Wyndham where we stop off at multiple beautiful little locations. So stay tuned for that one guys and we'll see you next week. Bye! Quickly captured to see if she was picking her nose. Uh, it's really zoomed in. I was hoping it 